Hi guys, welcome back to the Lathe Rebuild series. In this episode, we're taking a look first at the pulleys, uh, the belts, and fitting the main belt to the headstock. And hopefully by the end of this video, if all goes well, we'll have a running uh, lathe with the inverter all hooked up. See, the belts just need a good clean. They, they look fairly uh, good condition. Uh, just need a good clean, they're a bit dirty. And then you'll see the original main drive belt, which is a V-link belt. Uh, which were riveted on this is very worn out needs replacing you'll see the new one is like a more it's not leather it's plastic uh, it has these little t sections where you can slot them in take links out if you need to so it should be fairly simple to fit but uh, let's get to it Fitting the main belt drive to the headstock is an absolute pain in the ass. So I was just using some uh, steel wire to pull the T-links through and try and line it up and then I was going to connect the two links at the back. Um, this is a pain because there's not a lot of space to line everything up and get it done so fitting something like that wire on the front. Some people use tape or rope or anything like that. Anything that makes it easy for you uh, of course makes it a uh, much, much more manageable thing to do. It wasn't the easiest thing to film because the lathe is obviously fixed into position. Just know that you sort of push the two links together with the T slot, the T rivets, I don't know what they're called, sorry, uh, go through the two holes and then you turn them 90 degrees to lock them in place. Um, again, this isn't the easiest thing to record and this was changed a few times just to make sure that the tension, you'll see I'm turning the headstock round while holding the belt, which means um, you know it's not uh, tight enough. Also, the headstock isn't fixed into place. Uh, because I wanted to make sure all the alignment was correct, I didn't want it to be on a sort of uh, a diagonal uh, sort of pull. So making sure everything was square, and then the t the slots of the the belt were pulled out just to make sure the correct tension was applied to the headstock. This is the uh, motor mount, so you have a bolt and a washer on the outside, and then you have this small, I uh, can't remember what, what material it was, uh, it definitely wasn't metal, um, but that washer sits between the mount and the stand itself. So I'm just pushing the bolts through here, putting the washers on, and then I, what I actually do is I'm sat on the floor in front of the stand with my left arm around the back, just turning the bolts <coughs> by hand. So they thread into the motor mount, which you see here. Just hand tight so it holds them out in place. And you'll see I tighten them up afterwards just after moving the camera, making sure they're nice and snug down. Here's the motor and the connected pulley system. Just taking that other belt off there, I'll clean that up in just a, uh, a moment. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely strip this down because this thing is just covered uh, in schmutz. So take it apart, get it all clean, and then we'll be back once the motor's all clean, ready for reassembly.
In my lawnmower line of work, I don't really have much call for spanners. This uh, little adjustable spanner has been absolutely worth its weight in gold. Um, but the amount of different types of uh, nuts and bolts here that are metric and imperial, I did go out and source a proper spanner set. So <laughs> in future, this should be a lot easier. Um, but yeah, this little, uh, this little adjustable spanner has been absolutely uh, brilliant in just getting some of these nuts off the uh, sizes that I don't seem to have in sockets. So you can see the stand, uh, the mounting plate here, sorry, for the motor is just absolutely covered in gunk. Um, and a lot of these components, the main plate here had a bath in paraffin, a few of the, the components did as well. And then it actually went into an acetone bath to get the rest of the dirt and grime off just because the paraffin wouldn't lift it. Um, I did try a bit of acetone on the motor itself just to get the dirt off, but it was lifting the paint. So after that, I removed to isopropyl alcohol, which seemed to work pretty good at getting the thing clean. Here I'm just adjusting the pulley on the motor itself just because it's off centre compared to the other pulleys. So I'm just tapping it back on and uh, then tightening it all up so it's in place. I do a similar thing inside the stand a little bit later with the pulley system, just adjusting the motor mounts to get all the pulleys lined up. But then what I found out was getting the, the pulleys lined up, um, it actually put the bracket, the handle for putting torsion on the pulleys, um, it put that off centre so I did have to readjust it later on. So before we install the motor, we need to get it wired up correctly for the inverter. This is actually wired in star pattern and we need it in delta uh, pattern for the inverter. I'll do my best here. It was difficult to sort of film this and fit around with the wires as well. I didn't want to drop anything inside the motor. So if my hands do get in the way, I do apologize. So we need to take the red and the brown wires to A terminal, yellow and white to the B terminal, and then blue and black wires to the C terminal, leaving the neutral terminal or the N terminal, whichever it stands for, uh, with no wires on it. There's a load of washers and different uh, fitments here for the wires, so just making sure everything's correct and it doesn't have to be talked up too much to be uh, nice and tight.
You'll also see me take a quick snap of the information plate on the motor because once this is fitted it's going to be much harder to see. So I'm using an Invitec OptiDrive E3, very simple and easy to set up, very simple to go through the interior settings on the inverter as well to set up to your motor and getting all that information correct. So I'm for the first test, I'm just going to wire this thing up to check that it all works, I want to check the motor works, everything like that. Once that's all done, then we can go in afterwards and get all the wiring nice and neat and make sure it's all routed through the machine properly. So you'll see. I've got the ground from the motor running into the inverter. Then I've got the three wires, white wires, which were to the three terminals on the motor itself. Just so happens when I was wiring this up, I managed to get the orientation of the wires correct. So on first start, it turned over in the right uh, direction, which was good. Now I'm going through all the settings. So I'm just going through the book, making sure everything it tells you on the information panel that I pulled out the front what each setting is for, so whether it's for motor frequency, motor voltage, etc. like that. Uh, so I'm just going all the way through the settings and uh, making sure they're all correct. The last thing that I'm doing here is just bridging these two connections with a piece of wire. This is where you would wire in your main switch for power on for the lathe whether it be an emergency stop or anything like that that can always be changed in future um, and can be wired into everything else Here's testing the back gear. The noise you can hear is the grease on the gears. 